This is Ryan Shamrock. You're listening to InYourHeadOnline.com. All right, we're back here once again. Internet icon Jackie Jones, am I right here, man? Oh, one inch biceps. That's right. You want me to do that? <laughs> you can if you want. <laughs> nah. <laughs> we already did our intro, but we're doing it again. So you knew who we were because I forgot to tell you uh, during the break. But, oh. Mm-hmm. That's all right. We're joined now by Peggy Morgan, MMA fighter, who will be at the New England Fan Fest at Hall of Fame coming up June 27th at the Rhode Island Convention Center. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? Pretty good. I think that's... No. Um, so, how did you get involved in the Fan Fest? Well, I'm friends with a gentleman named Eric Spicely, who's friends with Joseph, so... He asked if I'd be interested in doing it, and I said, yeah, sure, why not? Um, it, it's kind of strange. I don't, as I've, I've admitted, I don't know much about pro wrestling. never actually watched it, but my my friends are really into it, so I understand a lot about it through them. I, I think my connection here is, is just that I fight, and a lot of wrestling fans also like fighting. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's what I'm doing. I'm just going to be hanging out. Yeah. I was going to ask that. Is there a big crossover audience? Um, oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. There's a lot, a lot of MMA fighters are actually really into pro wrestling. And I think it works the other way, too, although I don't, I don't know. I don't really hang out with the pro wrestling crowd too much. Mm-hmm. Oh, it definitely is. I mean, uh, on the big UFC shows, you'll see a lot of, like, uh, the top WWE guys in the audience. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you are you familiar with uh, CM Punk who just recently signed with uh, US. Yeah, I, I am. I know who that is. Actually, I watched half of Raw one time, and he was my favorite at the time. But then <laughs> once he, he made his, his transition over to MMA, like a lot of MMA fighters aren't big fans of him because they. I mean, he, he got right into the top promotion without ever even having an amateur fight. So there's, I mean, there's a little bit of hard feelings there from people who've been working really hard for you know, nearly a decade, you get into the UFC, and this guy's just like, oh, hey, I want to fight in the UFC. And they're like, yeah, sure, you don't know anything. Come on in. So <laughs> a lot of Walter Waits really want to fight him, including um, the gentleman you're going to have later, Chuck O'Neill, would love to fight him Excellent. in the UFC. Yeah, there's a lot of wrestling fans who would like to see CM Punk get beat up. because they see get beat up? Guy, yeah, because a lot of them see him as a guy who left, you know, their, their, uh, the thing that they love to go on and do something else. So there's, yeah, nobody's there's, very happy with him. Honestly, they're probably going to see him get beat up unless they really find him <laughs> as soon as they can to beat him. Like, I mean, he doesn't really have much of business being in the UFC at this point from what I've heard and what I've seen. Yeah, oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he's like a white belt in, uh, in something or other. No. I heard blue, a blue belt in jiu-jitsu, which, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's not terrible. You have to work pretty hard to get a blue belt, but most UFC fighters could probably... Yeah, yeah, I mean that's like you, you might be good at playing basketball out like and you're you know outside like on your basketball hoop, but that doesn't mean you can go and play the NBA. No, exactly, exactly. So, yeah, it's like it's like being good at baseball and be like, I was going to play basketball, and they're like, Yeah, sure, go play basketball for for the Celtics. It's cool. Come on in. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, well, we don't uh, follow a lot of MMA here, but I do know that. Uh, uh, women's MMA has really become really big, and that's like one of the top draws with uh, with Ronda uh, Rousey. And how does that make you feel as a woman in uh, in mixed martial arts? That uh, you know, that's really it's not just like this little uh, almost like a gimmick part of MMA. It's 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 a legit thing that people uh, really are really interested in seeing. Um, you know, it, it's weird. I kind of came into it at the right time when I, I first. Started a little over three years ago, honestly. I had some amateur boxing experience prior to that, but um, I started fighting MMA about three and a half years ago, and there really wasn't much of a market for it. I just I just did it for shits and giggles. I thought it would be fun, and then pretty much right after that, the whole thing with Ronda Rousey happened and it exploded. So I just happened to be starting out at the right time. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean it's fortuitous. I, I feel like I lucked out and walked into something really cool. Yeah. Um, what did your family and friends think, like, uh, you know, when you started to get in, in, into fighting? Oh, I mean, I I was involved in boxing for a long time. I didn't really surprise anyone. Um, I mean, you know, I got a master's degree in literature, and I think my poor mother was, like, really hoping I would become normal after that, like maybe get married and just have babies and teach college literature and be cool like that. 
Um, but that didn't work out for my mom. So she's, she's still trying to get used to it. She really doesn't like that. I punch other women in the face for a living right now. Um, <laughs> but I mean, everybody who knows me well, nobody was really shocked. It kind of figures that I'd do something like that. Yeah. No, um, I have a friend who, uh, did a little, uh, she didn't like really get in, had MMA fights, but she, uh, trained a little bit for, uh, for something to do. And she said it was hard because, uh, the other girls in the training would, um, like, you know, they would be kind of shy and when they really get hit. So then you kind of feel bad hitting, hitting them. When you started to, uh, to get into it, did you, did you experience that? Like, no, cause I only really trained with guys. So I, didn't have, I mean, it was like the opposite where I was getting freaking ass kicked all the time. Um, yeah, I, I honestly have only had a few female training partners. Um, I, like my only regular like striking sparring partner that's a female is a pro boxer. So like I'll get together with her a couple times a month maybe and just do boxing. But when I'm doing like MMA sparring, it's always with guys. I'll be usually I'm the only girl like in our Wednesday night sparring sessions with you know 15 to 20 men. Mm-hmm. And like sometimes I look around I'm like, whoa, this is kind of kind of weird, but. I'm just so used to it. I, I don't really think about it too much. Yeah. Um, what is, uh, like, the primary uh, fan base for, uh, would you say, for uh, female uh, MMA? Is it, like, oh, a lot man. of who, you know, watch it, or is it men, or is it just a mixture? I, I think it's a good mix, honestly. I think, um, I mean, there, there is, like, a creepy element where there are some really, really, really strange I gonna, people. I was kind of going to go there, but... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, I don't think that's, <laughs> that's who you're talking the biggest to now. fan base. I want to say most of the fans are, like, very nice, very supportive, all mean people, but uh-huh. there are some real creepy fucks out there. Oh, um, yeah. I have, like, all female MMA fighters that are fairly well-known have, like, a, a foot fetish following. There's, like, this thing called Wiki Feet, and because we fight barefoot, like, our feet end up on wikifeet.com, and they'll rate your feet. <laughs> my, feet are, my feet are, like fucking disgusting like they're uh, gross like you when you fight with barefoot all the time like you like my toenails are half falling off i don't bother painting them because like all the, the the toenail polish comes off on the mat like huge calluses like they're, they're just filthy nasty gross feet and i think my feet have like nine out of ten stars or something well that, you know, these weirdos on twitter wanting to lick them and stuff it's just it's just really <laughs> really weird <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beholder mm-hmm, mm-hmm. apparently yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, so those people they, they come to the shows and they're wearing like uh, rain jackets. <laughs> Jack, are you uh, making yeah, all you the posts really on Wiki Feet? <laughs> what? No, I, I, I do not you have. Be good way. <laughs> I, will, I will look it up after the uh, after the program here tonight. It's pretty disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> so I do want to also mention it's uh, NewEnglandFanFest dot com. The links up on our website. And um, I know you're from the area. Well, you're from New England, so uh, you, I assume you're familiar with Rhode Island. Yeah, well, I live in Pawtucket, so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm local. There's a lot of events you know going on for that weekend. Uh, it's really cool because during the day it's a meet and greet, and you got and people can come and get uh, autographs and pictures with everybody. And then at nighttime it's the um, it's a Hall of Fame. Now I know you're not familiar with wrestling, but would you stay there? For, are you going to stay for the Hall of Fame to see what that's about? Yeah, I, I probably will just because I'll be there with with Chuck and Eric, and I know they'll be excited for it. So. I'll stay to watch them be happy. I saw your nickname is uh, the Daywalker. How how did that come? Yeah, from? from South Park actually. I have red hair but no freckles. So, have you ever seen the South Park episode where they have gingers and daywalkers? Yeah, the gingers are like the redheads with the freckles, and the daywalkers are the ones that don't have the freckles, and they can go out in the sun. So, mm. one of my former training partners would always call me a ginger and say things like, ah, oh, I choked this ginger. And I'd say, I'm not a ginger, I'm a jaywalker. <laughs> so, then before my first amateur fight, like, we had that argument again. He was, like, helping me warm up, calls me a ginger, I tell him I'm a daywalker. And he, goes, like, shuts off, and I don't know where he's gone. Then when I'm walking out, I hear them announce me as the daywalker. And everybody really liked it, so it kind of it started as a joke and it just stopped. I've, I've thought about changing it a few times, mostly because I'm like sick of explaining it, and everybody thinks it's got like weird vampire connotations, which it totally doesn't. It has nothing to do with anything vampirish at all. But yeah, it started as a stealth rock joke. Yeah. So, uh, what was the uh, Ultimate Fighter experience like? Um. Well, it. I'm really glad I did it. It was an awesome opportunity. Um. I wouldn't take it back, but I'm so glad I don't have to do it again. I honestly, I was pretty miserable. 
most people I know who have done the Ultimate Fighter haven't liked it because you're completely isolated. Like, you get there, um, you spend six weeks locked in the house with the other competitors, they take your phone away. You have no access to the outside world, like no internet, no books, no movies, no TV, no, like no nothing. You're just in this house with these people, and that's like all you have. And all you see really is the gym and the house. They shuttle you back and forth, and it gets it gets pretty like lonely in a way and very depressing after a while. Chuck, mm-hmm. um, who you're going to have on later, is one of the only people I've ever met who really loved it. Like He would do it again in a heartbeat. He had a great time. But everybody else I know who's done it, like hated it, and I, I probably hated it more violently than a lot of them. I spent a lot of the time locked in the room, lying in my bed, moping. I'm Man. pretty sure the producers hated me because I was like hiding from the camera all the time. Sounds a lot like Scientology. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'm not really, I'm not really sure how. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure either. There's, uh, you said about you know uh, that they probably didn't like the show because you weren't you know out there doing stuff. Did they ever? Did they ever try to, I don't want to say manipulate, but try to, like, get you to uh, do something, you know, for the camera so, so it's, like, uh, so they can ca- capture something, you know, uh, either controversial or entertaining to put on the show? Honestly, like, I expected that sort of thing, and that didn't happen on that show at all. And I remember talking to the camera. Like, we weren't allowed to talk to the, the crew at all while they were filming. Like, we couldn't interact with the camera people, obviously, because it was ruin the film. So, like, after they took our mics off and they were finished filming, I remember talking to some of the camera people and referring to it as a reality show, and they were, like, almost offended because it didn't have those elements of them trying to get us on. It was almost more like a documentary where they just kind of set us in this house and let us do whatever we wanted to do and filmed it without interfering at all. Like, it was very authentic. Like, and obviously, like, when they took the film, like, I mean, they filmed hundreds of thousands of hours of us doing stuff. Um, so they edited it and made it look a certain way. Like they could choose what footage to show, but they they never really manipulated us at all. Yeah, no, I know a lot of people say you know when they're part of a reality show or a documentary that after a while you just uh, you kind of forget the cameras there. Uh, did you? Oh yeah. That happened to you? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, you have to because if you have a microphone around your neck twenty four seven, like you can take it off to sleep, but you hang it by your bed. And if you get up to go pee in the middle of the night, you have to put the microphone on, otherwise somebody comes and chases you down and tells you to put the microphone on. Um, there's microphones in the bathroom i mean like everything is mics everything has cameras like there's no privacy and you probably lose your mind if you're too aware of it one of the weird things about coming off the show is i remember anytime i'd be having a conversation with somebody and something interesting would come up i would completely expect like a boom mic to come around the corner and a camera to start looking at me like i just got so used to that being like part of the landscape that it's probably for like four or five months afterwards it was really strange that i wasn't being filmed yeah you think that and also, I still have, I still have the weird habit of like covering my neck if I'm going to say something I don't want everybody to hear because I, I feel like I'm wearing a mic. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll say, uh, do you think that experience, uh, I don't say makes you become more entertaining, but if you you know used to being filled and stuff, uh, it kind of makes you kind of seem like you're you're on at times when you're talking to people. I actually think it did the opposite to me. And other people have said the same thing, too. I was, like, much more, like, out there and extroverted and kind of wild and crazy before the show. And that that feeling of, like, being exposed and being watched so much, like, knowing that everything I do is, is going to be, like, shown to potentially millions of people, it kind of, like, made me withdraw a little bit. And I'm, I'm definitely more, like, thoughtful and more reserved than I used to be. It almost changed me in the opposite way that you would expect. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're on your team, uh, uh, Rousey. Uh, what was uh, what was what was being around Rhonda like? Um, it was it was really cool actually. I I genuinely like Rhonda. A lot of people, and she was kind of portrayed as a bitch um, on the show, and that goes back to like you know they have all this footage, and they obviously pick like the most dynamic, dramatic stuff. And so she didn't come across as well as she might have. And to be fair, she is pretty nuts. Like they didn't they didn't portray her incorrectly they just like showed the craziest parts um i i mean i had a good experience being around her and training with her i still talk to her occasionally like i i think she's awesome i think she's great but she is kind of batshit crazy so yeah <laughs> it's not like the persona that you see like she was like that all the time it's not like something that she puts on that's wrong though. 
Uh-huh. She was on uh, WrestleMania this year. And they, they, she was? Yeah, and they think she'll be uh, wrestling at, at the next WrestleMania. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I saw that clip. I watched the clip of her wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh, some people have are, are kind of against that. Uh, I don't know if you have any opinion on it. That um, if she uh, would wrestle on WrestleMania and uh, you know what they call sell for for someone who's not uh, a fighter, because they think it would be with um, Stephanie McMahon, who's not even you know a professional wrestler, owns a company. That that kind of makes uh, UFC look bad. Do you have any thoughts on that? Makes the UFC look bad. I don't. I don't think so. I mean. Um... I mean, at the end of the day, it's a business, and whatever they have to do to win their market, they're going to do. So I think it's going to make her more money. It's going to make them more money. I don't, I don't know. And maybe I'm just, like, a little bit jaded, right? I see it so much as, like, about making money for them. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't surprise me at all. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's um, – If maybe people who don't follow wrestling think this, but uh, for the most part, there's very few people who, you know, think uh, professional wrestling is, like, this totally legit thing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you have to really go to the backwoods to find people who <laughs> yeah, believe it's real. On the show, I guess. You <laughs> <laughs> make me second-guess myself. But... <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I listen, a lot of times Chuck will we'll put up the gym between training sessions. We train in the morning, we train again at night, and he'll watch, like, old WWE stuff on the WWE Network, and He'll be explaining things to me, and I'm always like, "Wait, is this part of the storyline, or is this real life?" Because I can't, I can't oh. even differentiate. <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it would be hard for somebody who doesn't follow it constantly to know, like, well, yeah, because like, some of the real life stuff sounds like it could be. So he was explaining <laughs> the whole Triple H, Seth Meyers man thing to me, and I'm like, "Wait, mm. wait, wait, is that really happen or not?" <laughs> yes, yeah, that, that's a weird one because uh, a lot of uh, the storyline then blended in, into real life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, it was hard for me to wrap my head around. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what would you say? Uh, have you had any like uh, serious injuries? Um, not really. I've been pretty lucky. I hurt. I, I think I blew my meniscus a few years ago, but not like terribly, and I was able to keep training on it. And it kind of healed. On its own, I have like lots. Of, this 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 is the week. Chuck says this is the Peggy the week that this week's Peggy thinks that she broke everything. Um, so like I was convinced I broke my ass, like literally. I like landed on my ass getting taken down. And I was convinced I busted my tailbone, which I had it. And then trying not to land on my ass, I landed on my shoulder. I was convinced I broke my shoulder. Um, and I thought I broke my thumb. And I'm pretty sure I did break my toe. So this has mm. been a bad week, but yeah. I've, I've recovered and I continue training. But other than that, like, I usually, I'm usually fine. I'm posting that on Wiki Ass right now. <laughs> you Wiki Ass. My ass is definitely, I don't have much of an ass. It's definitely not on Wiki Ass. Oh, okay. Damn. <laughs> I was just wondering. Although it is better than my feet. <laughs> what, what's your opinions on the Bellator promotion? Uh, I don't really have an opinion on the policy. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's great to have all of these um, higher level promotions for fighters to go to. It's, I mean, we don't want to have a monopoly. You don't want it to just be UFC. You want to have options, and there needs to be like you need to be able to get some bidding. Although at this point, like nobody can really outbid the UFC, but yeah. um, it would be nice. I fight for a promotion called Invicta, which is kind of like. They're sort of owned by the UFC in that it's shown on UFC Fight Pass. So it's, I, I'm going to say it's affiliated. It's not owned by them. Um, but they're, I would say they're kind of like the female Bellator. Mm. Um, who would you say uh, were some of your inspirations uh, to get into MMA? Honestly, I like didn't. You know, you know what? I have a WWE release. I have seen the WWE. This just came back to me. Uh-huh. I, was, I was very young. I was like probably 16. My boyfriend at the time forced me to watch some stupid wrestling show, which I didn't want to watch. <laughs> and this guy named Ken Shamrock comes out with a baseball bat, like, starts uh-huh. swinging at somebody. And I was like, that's the only person there that looks like a fighter. And he was like, no shit, that guy actually is a fighter. And maybe he watched the first UFC. And then I was like, I want to do this. So probably, like, Ken Shamrock is the reason I got into. Yeah. I used to get those old when, it was, uh, when they'd have the, the, the tournaments. Ken Shamrock, yeah. East Severin, and uh, yeah, Hoist Gracie. Yeah, I watched all of those. I didn't really, I haven't watched a lot of the more recent UFCs. Honestly, I don't watch a lot of MMA, but I watched all of the original UFCs. I loved them. 
Yeah, Lisa Wise, a big fan of Pride, too, when that was around. Oh, yeah, he had a sick mustache. <laughs> yeah. I can see more crossover with that in WWE than with current UFC and WWE. Yeah, well, um, it was like, I don't say like Wild West back then, but it was, you know, they, they didn't have the, uh, uh, it wasn't as regulated, so they didn't have like, oh, no. different weight classes, so it was... Yeah, it was awesome. Everybody just got into a cage and fought. Yeah, <laughs> so it'd be like a 600-pound, you know, sumo fighter fighting like a boxer. And... <laughs> yeah, that, so that French kickboxing guy that kicked the sumo wrestler's teeth out, that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, I personally always uh, disliked Hoist Gracie because you just like lay on the guy and grab his gi. I was like, that is, that's, that's something I appreciate now that I know jujitsu. But yeah, at the time when I was watching it, I was like, "What is this skinny man in the bathroom doing? Get him out of there!" <laughs> so you talked a few times about training. Um, what what uh, what's like a typical day for training for you, and how how much of your time do you spend training? I train quite a bit. I usually train two times a day. So often, like this morning, I, I did Jiu-Jitsu two this morning, and then this evening I had a boxing class, and then we did some rounds of, like, basically, like, wrestling, like, greco Roman wrestling to take down to Jiu-Jitsu. Um, so, but usually it's a, a good mix of, like, striking, a little bit of wrestling, some, some Jiu-Jitsu pretty much every day. Mm-hmm. Now... When you're at the New England Fan Fest, coming up June 27th at the Rhode Island Convention Center, which you can find all your information at NewEnglandFanFest.com, um, if someone comes up to you in, like, uh, a photo, or, like, uh, put them in, like, an arm bar or, a, uh, or choke them out or anything, uh, would you do that? Sure, why not? Right, good. As long as, like, nobody gets hurt. Uh, it's good news for you, it might be. Can I get one with your foot? <laughs> yeah, of course. Oh, excellent. that's gonna that's gonna cost extra though. Oh, okay. <laughs> it depends on which foot. You want the one with all the toenails or the one that's missing half the toenail? Oh, the one that's missing half, of course. Okay, because that's that's the more expensive foot. Oh, damn. <laughs> that's the good foot. Yeah, that, that's the premium. <laughs> well, I'll pony up yeah, the bucks. <laughs> well, it's been uh, it's been actually a lot of fun to talk to you, and I look forward to seeing you at uh, New England Fan Fest. Well, thank you. It's been good to talk to you, too. And uh, anything you'd like to tell people out there, if they would like to follow you, what's the easiest way? Uh, Twitter, Facebook? I I'm, I really like Twitter. I'm on Twitter a lot. I'm, it's Peggy Morgan MMA. Um, I'm on Facebook, but I don't really accept very many people. I think I'm pretty close to capacity, and at this point I don't. Unless I like, actually know somebody, I don't usually accept them. So Twitter is the best way oh. to get at me. Um, yeah, that's about it. Oh, and... Um, one of Chuck's good friends and roommates, H. Romero, is going to be making his debut for XWA tomorrow at Cranston, in Cranston, Rhode Island. So I was supposed to mention that. I'm sure he will too. But oh, okay. if you're in Cranston or close to it, you can make it there. You should go see Ace. Nice. Uh, by the way, we do have a question here from Facebook, and they want to know uh, who your favorite wrestler is. My favorite wrestler mm-hmm. is Chuck O'Neill, the undefeated pro wrestler. But. I have two others that are pretty close, and those are Eric Spicely and Ace Romero, who you can see tomorrow night in Cranston, Rhode Island. Excellent. Well, uh, thanks for coming on. It's been a lot of fun. Well, thank you. I look forward to meeting you guys in person. Cool. And you're at online.com. That's the important stuff. Now, the most important thing is you're listening to Jake the Snake Roberts. Don't you ever forget that, or you just never know what might show up. <laughs>